Bam linked this video for like almost three days. I wasn't going to watch it, but now my curiosity's peaked. What is this video all about? I've seen a lot of people react to this. I haven't seen what this shit's about, but protest Genshin Impact what Hoyoverse doesn't want you to know by Suldapop. Okay, well, let's see. This has only one dislike. So I'm assuming this is probably pretty basehead because it's very hard to talk against the company and people to agree. But uh, let's see. What is this shit all about? The global Genshin community has lost the plot. True. Regardless of where you lie on the issues the community is facing, we can probably all agree on that. Think about I mean, I, I will be real. I was very happy advocating against the issues of the company. But as again, as happens every, and think about this guys, every time I have an issue with the company, creators have an issue with me. Every single time, every, why do you think that is? About that though. You think the other side's lost the plot. The other side thinks you have lost the plot. Yep. So everyone has lost the plot. Yep. Regardless of where you may fall. I don't believe that I've lost the plot. I feel like I'm very aware of everything, to be honest. The problem is, is that I am one man. And it's not so much that I've lost the plot. It's so much that other creators are preventing me from addressing the plot by just coming after me non-stop when I'm just trying to cover the issues. My opinion. So let's get things back on track. We Actually, to be honest, to be honest, I might just be the plot. Am I an, e am I an egoist? Am I, is that a narcissistic take? I, I might actually just be the plot. All seen and by now, the infamous screenshot to thank yep. you for the past year. We'll be giving you three wishes. Yep. There's been quite a lot of discontent with Genshin lately from Hokai Star Rail getting- No, no, no. It's not that there's been discontent with Genshin lately. It's that there's always been discontent with Genshin, but now people are finally starting to talk about it. I think everything Genshin players have been asking for for the past three years to artifact loadouts that aren't artifact loadouts. Yep. Things- Where the f*** did you get this footage from, man? Roblox? Had been slowly moving closer to the edge, and that statement was the final push for everything to start crashing down. Yep. The Zian community started to push back. They unfollow Genshin social media in the millions and review bomb them like their name was Nagasaki. Now, yep. I want to be clear. Jesus Christ, what a joke. I was hyped about 4.4. What? Gaming and Xianyun looked really fun. The Lantern Right quest is all- Okay, but saying this character looks fun, so I'm excited for this patch, it, it makes a lot of people- uh, not they, they forget the sentiment that new characters do not equal new content because if you can't get the character then what is the patch that's why new characters don't matter they're a nice addition but like that can't be the only update you get for an entire version cycle you just can't it's a good time for me seeing the twins together finally getting to experience chenyu veil after it's been teased for so long and the same rewards we got for lantern light last year that i didn't and frankly still don't have a problem with and on top of that why 4.3 was probably my least favorite patch since i started playing two years ago okay it was carried entirely by the new characters and that's not a good state for the game to be in i agree if you didn't pull navi or chev and yep. had already completed the previous exploration and story content yep cope to push through those six weeks must have been exhausting yep so i think my hype to actually have something to do again is pretty justified. Yep, I agree. Now you might hear that and assume I'm not in favor of the protest, but that's not true. I can be satisfied with the game and be dissatisfied with Hoya's business practices. If hosts were tortured monkeys, it wouldn't change how Twinkies taste. The reason I waited so long Hold to up. throw my two What the f did you just say? Satisfied with the game and be dissatisfied with Hoya's business practices. If hosts is tortured monkeys, it wouldn't change how Twinkies taste. That's fair. The reason I waited so long to throw That's my fair. two cents in is because I was waiting for their response. I'm still waiting, and that's unacceptable. In the face of... Uh, that's because Hoyoverse has statistically one of the worst customer complaint reactions. Uh, there's a word for it. Customer... What is it called? It's like the amount of time they use in order to respond to customer complaints is some of the slowest in the whole world. Uh, yeah, customer resolution for their complaints. Yes, 100%. Such discontent, their lack of response shows an utter disregard for their consumer's interest. Because of that, I don't think anyone in good faith should award them their trust, and most importantly, their business, until they can prove otherwise. Yeah, I agree. So, here's what That's I'm fair. doing, and you might think it's stupid, but I was brought up in a time when my history teachers weren't afraid of offending someone by talking about historical protests that worked. Yep. I, for the past four days, have been performing a digital sin. Uh, being constructively, uh, being critical of a company's business practices is not being toxic, guys. I will say that for the rest of my life. In, in Genshin. 
I have set all my settings as low as possible, changed my name to free to play until change, and my bio to if you want Hoyo to listen to Global, make them. And yep. for the first time since I started playing, I didn't get the battle pass. Like Good. I said, you might think that's stupid, no, but imagine for a moment if when a player hit the co op tab, Every name that showed up. This is smart. I like this a lot. I never thought of this. This is great. Imagine their servers being clogged down with people sitting in game, doing nothing, and refusing to spend money. It'd be kind yep. of hard for Hoyo to ignore us then, wouldn't it? By the way, while we're on the nature of protest, uh, I don't think they need to sit in game doing nothing. This will actually give them a proper demographic of player retention, which they can sell to advertisers and investors who want to, to see how their game is doing. So I don't think you need to stay in game, but I think changing your name is absolutely fine to give more people more awareness because then they'll be like, well, what do they need to change? They'll go online, they'll look at what's been going on, they'll be more, they'll be more informed. Don't go to Honkai Star Rail instead. Yep. That's like protesting Walmart by going to the Walmart neighborhood market. Now back to the issues with. Uh, no, nah, I think that's I think that's pretty different. I do think that's pretty different. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. But for this scenario, it's a little bit more nuanced because it's not about shutting down Hoyoverse because Hoyoverse as a whole isn't bad, right? It's just a specific branch. I actually think it is fine to go to Honkai Star Rail to play because that directly communicates what people are saying, which is we like this game. It has what we want. Can we have that, right? Hoyoverse itself isn't the problem. It's generally just the, the Genshin Impact branch from Hoyoverse. The community. We were on a good track. As much as I dislike the guy, Tectone was doing a really good job of taking the helm and spread. Why do you dislike me? The track. As much as I dislike the guy, Tectone was doing a really good job of taking the helm and spreading awareness of the issue. What? What did I do? What did I? What did I do? Okay, so this is from a guy who doesn't like me. Okay, I wonder. I wonder what it is that I did. Okay, that's interesting. All right. Well. I'm white? Nah, I mean, I don't think it's that. Okay, well, I mean, okay. That's fine. You can have whatever opinion of me you want. Content creators were speaking out and yep. letting their audiences know how the protests were justified and that they understood their audience's discontent. Yep. But then, Xian Yun dropped and every single one of them went back to making guides like nothing happened. Yep. Now, I realize that people don't understand the gravity of the word protest quite as well as they used to. So I'll spell it out for you. If you are a content creator and you did this, you are a scab. Does that word have your attention? You cannot say, yeah, good job protesting this company and then go do marketing for them. Now, anyone that knows me knows- uh, uh, uh. What do you guys think? Interesting. Let's, let's, let's continue to hear this guy out. That was really, really hard for me to say. I am painfully non-confrontational but it has to be said because clearly y'all either don't that's why he doesn't like me is because he's painfully unconfrontational and i'm very confrontational okay i get it now get it or you're two-faced snakes that were chasing the algorithm because tecto made it trend and hold on tight because it only gets worse from here you notice how everybody stopped bitching about me the moment that i wasn't on trending anymore have we all have we all noticed that right like we're all we all noticed that right that suddenly when I'm not trending, everybody just goes away, right? Oh, that's that's interesting. That's very interesting. I wonder why they do it. I wonder why they do it. It's very, uh, you know, maybe I'll think about that for a little bit. In all likelihood, this is the death of my channel. I've seen what happens when someone takes the names of Tectone or Atsu in vain. Channel blows up for a bit because Tectone stands and Genshin Twitter go to war in the comments. All the viewers that watched your content before leave to avoid the drama, and the channel dies when they find something else to latch onto. <laughs> okay, now I will I will say pretty much nothing happens when you bring up Atsu's name. Okay, I'll, I'll be real. Because people were horrified of bringing up that dude. Because if you bring up Atsu's name, people really don't like that. Because he's friends with like Tawano and Dish and Anthony Chen. And nobody wants to be on their bad side. So Atsu has a huge benefit of being um, very good friends within the space. Now, this is, this is much different than me being friends with OTK, right? Because they're not in the space, right? Being, being ne having a negative opinion of the people in OTK will have no relevancy to your like presence in the gotcha space at all. But being enemies with like 
Fa, Benatsu, and Dish, and Tawano, like, or Doro, like, that will make people feel worse about you because they know who those people are. So, yeah, this one is, it's almost correct. But, you know... But it is very true because all these people, and, and just to let you guys know, like, in drama, the bigger channel always loses, right? Because it's going to show, showcase to your subscribers, you in a quote-unquote perceived negative light, right? That's why generally larger content creators ignore smaller creators. My biggest issue is, is that I ignore no one. That That's my biggest issue. And that might be a major downfall eventually for my channel, but I cannot stand when dumb mother think that they're right. And I have to say something, bro. I just have to. Now, smaller channels, they get all the benefit because then they get the spotlight. A whole new audience gets to know who they are, whether that be negative or positive. As long as people are talking about you, that's pretty much all that matters. It's always better to be talked about than not talked about. What I'm doing in most scenarios. And anyways, because this is important to me. But what about their livelihoods? Do you honestly think they need to make guides to make money on Twitch and YouTube? You can take one look at my channel, which had 50 subs last year, mind you, and see there are other ways to get views. These channels have a hundred times my subscriber base. I think they'll be fine. The player base isn't as ride or die for either building. Now, I will say, I don't think this guy understands that guide content equates to free views. It does. People think that drama equates to free views, but the problem with drama is it also brings negative PR. You can make a guide for anything on a popular game and you will get views. And that's how a lot of guide makers develop an ego very, very, very quickly because when their videos get detected by the algorithm, they get see those views, but they don't get that people aren't there for them. They're there for the guide, right? There's very few people who go to guide makers for their personality right now there are outliers there are outliers but that's why people make guides because any mother can make a guide and as long as you're the first one to post it you will get views you will get money right i do agree though they could do other things than just make guides but uh then the content would have to like make sense they would have to showcase more of who they are because for a lot of guide makers it's kind of just like one plus one equals two put the red set on the red guy put the purple set on the purple guy right but a lot of them truly don't know how to I guess have have a have a dialogue with their community about who they are and what they like and what they think. Being the best team, filling out the waifu Pokedex, or appreciating Genshin for its lore as you might think. There's obviously outliers, like for sure. Braxophone puts a lot of personality as guys. I, I commend him for that. If you put out something that looks interesting, Genshin fans will watch it. That's fair. I put out everything from game mechanics to team building to lore, and I've seen nothing but growth on my channel. But it's not enough to just say it. I mean, I, I will be real. You can pretty much upload anything on Genshin Impact and have a channel within three or four months if you're actually consistent with it. I mean, it, it is true. Like, the, the, the people of this fan base are rabid. They will watch and consume anything. As long as you just say, wow, Genshin good, you will get views on YouTube. Case in point, top 10 likes video by Tectone. People will watch anything. So here are some ideas for videos that will still ride the algorithm so you can still get your bag without being a scab. Okay. In-game changes that will save Genshin. Okay. Genshin quality of life updates that need to happen. Top changes needed for new and returning Genshin players. How to beat Spiral Abyss without Xiangyun or Gaming. That last one's free content because this cycle, despite what I went to lose said, is so easy. Those of you that put out videos saying Xiangyun is trash aren't off the hook either. If you have to lie and manipulate your audience to get them to support your cause, all that does is show you don't believe in the cause as much as you let on. You're no better. It's real simple. Just don't promote the character. I know I'm letting you all down by not putting out a guide, but this... But the other thing is, you gotta understand, the reason why these guide makers do that is because it quite literally is free money. If you say new character is insane, best build guide for that character, you will get hundreds of thousands of views overnight. And, and the problem is, is that there are a lot of people who would not be able to thrive in the, and I'm fully aware of this, they would not be able to thrive as much in the content creator space if they were to not make those guides. However, and this is the big however that people are forgetting. When your entire personality and when your entire channel is only built on capitalizing of the overhype of a specific game, 
and you can't make new videos or transformative content unless there is new content, your channel is not going to last. And so it is very essential to pivot from that strategy, albeit profitable on short term, long term, it's not sustainable. And I think a lot of people forget that, that if they do want to have longevity in the space, they can't just do, I capitalize on the hype of the new stuff and nothing else. So it, it, it's a double-edged sword, man. This is really important to me, and I hope you can understand that and join me in this fight to save the game we all love. And yes, the game is in danger, but I'll touch on that later. Next, we have to talk about the drama. Tectone, I'm speaking directly to you. Sure, man. You are being baited into talking about drama to draw attention away from the protest. I'm, I'm, I'm fully aware. Oh, I'm absolutely fully aware. Absolutely, but... Unfortunately, here's the thing, and I'll, I'll talk directly to you, Soul the Pop. What Atsu did to my life two years ago took precedence over Genshin Impact. Genshin Impact is just a game to me, okay? What Atsu did my life for two years. I was fully aware it was a bait. I was absolutely fully aware. But correcting that wrong was very, very, very important to me. And due to that, my reputation has now been better than it's ever been. And I got one of my best friends back. So I hope you understand there are certain things that take precedence over Genshin Impact's game state to me. And that is for sure one of them. You've become the figurehead of it. Absolutely. If you aren't talking about it, things don't seem as bad as you made them out to be. You don't think those other creators know what happens when Tectone has an issue with them. Atsu and the Click are really just throwing themselves under the bus for Hoyoverse Absolutely. to get you to stop talking about the issues with the game and the company. And Atsu, why would you do that to yourself? Aren't you supposed to be the 50-year-old granddaddy of Genshin? That doesn't seem wise. It's just a couple of death threats. It's not like the president of this multi-billion dollar company faced an assassination attempt from one of these fans. Sure, I'll take the fall so you don't have to acknowledge you've messed up. Count on me. But hey, maybe y'all aren't convinced that Hoyo needs to do anything. He probably got a fat paycheck, man. Don't worry, bro. So let's refocus so I can give a better look at just how much of a catastrophe things are at the company right now. I'm about to show you some stuff Hoyo definitely doesn't want you to know. And it's about to become painfully clear why they aren't publicly traded. I've compiled the aggregate data for Hoyoverse's reported revenue from Sensor Tower obtained by Gotcha Revenue and the monthly sales data of the CN iOS market for both Genshin and Honkai Styrel since their respective launches through Genshin Lab. I'll have the sheet linked in the description if you're curious about the data and my methodologies. Okay. The first thing I'd like to point out is right here. In December, the CN iOS market spent $40 million on Honkai Styrel, but Hoyo's reported revenue for Honkai Starrail in the month of December was 28 million. That's 145% their reported revenue. So how is it possible that they made more money in that single market than they made in all markets combined? It's called bootstrapping, and it's a perfectly legal method almost every larger company does to limit their revenue to avoid certain taxes. However, Typically, that lost revenue will go into something like hiring new employees, giving bonuses to CEOs, marketing, obtaining liquid assets, you know, things you'd expect a company to do. But Hoyo put it into microtransactions on their own game to make the sales look higher than they actually were. They squandered their revenue on a digital currency that has no trade value. Allegedly. Think about what's going on in Genshin at the moment. Yun Yun setting all these. I would love to know the. I need to know more before I weigh in on that. Records. After seeing that, can you really say that with confidence? Think about it for a minute. This is the CN iOS market. You know, the player base that's actually taken the protest seriously enough to take meaningful action towards change. Ain't no shot that market is the one setting records for Seonyun. That's not the worst of it. Bootstrapping like this isn't something you do when things are great with the company. It's an ill omen. And I'm not just spitballing baseless claims. I've got the data to back it up. Here, I've charted the Sensor Tower reported revenue for Hoyo's game since December of 2022. And is Sensor Tower really that legitimate? Like, can we trust them as a legitimate source? The green line is the combined revenue for all three games. 
As you can see, the revenue was pretty stable until the launch of Honkai Star Rail, and it saw a huge spike. But that spike immediately fell off. They were doing a little better than before for a while, but things steadily tapered off until we get to last month where Hoyo is doing worse than they were before the launch of Honkai Star Rail. I know what you're thinking. Big deal. That's still tens of millions of dollars. You're missing the forest through the trees. They're now running another game that has its own employees, marketing, and maintenance, and they're making less than they were when it was just Genshin. Look at this like you're an investor. It's not a good sign to see the company you have a stake in lose money. And when profit margins drop, investors get spooked. When investors get spooked, companies die. Well, yeah, that's the same That's the same thing that I've been advocating for a very long time, which is if you're unsatisfied with the game, then completely stop playing the game. Don't stay in there and do nothing and act like the server maintenance fees are going to outweigh the threat of saying to investors that... Okay, well, nobody plays your game, so why would I want to invest in it? That's what I don't get, right? So, I mean, okay, this is very interesting, but this guy's making a lot of bold claims, and I would love to know the source of everything. I don't think that Sensor Tower is a completely objective truth when it comes to presenting their data. I feel like this is obviously a very interesting narrative for people to jump on board of, but where does Sensor Tower get their numbers from? You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I don't think that Center Tower is the be-all, end-all of all information when it comes to net sales inside gotcha games, right? Investors get spooked. When investors get spooked, companies die. And Very true. That's very true. You remember 3.0? Yep. Genshin was everywhere. Where was all that marketing for 4.0? Well, it's tough to do marketing for two games when you're bleeding profits. Now, it's time for the moment you've all been waiting for. It mm. wasn't clickbait. I'm about to prove to you that whales don't carry Genshin. And it makes sense when you take any amount of time to actually hmm. think about it. Let's take a look at Genshin since the launch of Star Rail. Okay. Notice anything odd. Sales are way down. But wait a minute. What about all those C6, R5, Nuvolet, Risley, Farina, and Navia showcases? The whales came out for those banners. Right. I'd hate to do this to you, but if you want proof, and to be peer pressured into endlessly grinding artifacts, all you have to do is look at Akasha and see just how many have submitted builds for Solo Abyss for those characters. If whales carried Genshin, sales would not be so much lower than they were in 3.0. But it's gotcha. Gotcha equals carried by whales. I mean, the majority of gacha games are 1 million percent carried by whales. 1 million percent. I, I'm still not seeing anything objective to prove this narrative, so I am confused why it's being uh, stated so assuredly. Not Genshin. Do you know what the biggest thing that separates Genshin from other gachas? It, this, it broke the Nomi barrier. The ceiling for whales is much lower. The ceiling for whales is much lower. Um, I don't know about that. I think that each character could net, let's see, R5 is probably around two grand, probably around five grand per character and weapon. I, I would say that for a game like FGO, it would most likely be much higher for how much you can whale or Epic 7, but 5k per character is still pretty insane. How many copies of Raiden can I have on my team? Yep. How many copies of writing can I get before getting more copies does nothing? Yep. Other gotcha's method to get you to spend money rely on getting endless copies of a character or weapon until a few weeks later when they power creep them. I mean, I wouldn't say Arknights should be included on that list. I don't think Arknights was too bad for the pay-to-win aspects, personally. You know, I felt like Arknights was actually pretty free-to-play friendly, to be honest. They've got no problem giving out the character for free because just having the character is never enough. That's just the first FGO step. FGO is horrible, In though. In Genshin, every limited five-star but Dia is complete at C0. You'll never need another copy. And you can be fairly confident they'll just continue to get better as new characters, weapons, and artifacts are released. Com Wait, let me go back. You'll never need... Every limited five-star but Dia is complete at C0. You'll never need another copy. And you can be fairly confident... They'll just continue to get better as new characters, weapons, and artifacts are released. Uh, saying that as a blanket statement, I wouldn't agree with. 
I feel like a lot of characters do fall off dramatically with like introduction of Dendro, like Geo got g completely giga. But I don't think the characters are complete because they're at C0. Because I, I get what he's saying. The game is simple enough to where you would not need to wail. You would not need to wail to beat the content because it's so easy. So I, I understand what he's trying to say. I think about the way that he's saying it is a little bit confusing for people. But uh, yeah, the game's easy. You can just use C0 characters to beat everything. I mean, to be honest, you can beat the game with all four stars. So yeah, I understand what he's saying. Cons are just a flex. The product in Genshin is the base character. Now, that being said, it... Okay, why am I coming up? That being said, people are still going to wail just because they want to with over-attachment and characters. But there definitely is definitely not a need to wail in the game 100%. I think wailing actually ruins the game. Sidetrack to talk directly to Tectone again. Sure. I don't know who you've been talking to, but Hu Tao has not been power crept. She's still the queen of vaporize, and Homa is still the most ridiculously overtuned weapon in the game. I don't know when the f was when did I talk about that? I mean, I have. Am I crazy? Like, when the f did I talk about that? I mean, maybe maybe I talked about it, but like like maybe maybe I talked about it, but like not recently for this to be weighing this heavily on this dude's mind. I just don't. I mean, I don't even remember this shit, bro, at all. One of the drama rants you said something. Yeah, yeah, maybe like what months ago? I got no idea what this guy's talking about. Nor do I understand how this is prevalent at all. I mean, I really don't get it. If you still don't want to believe me about whales not carrying the game, just look at the banner sales. The top of the charts are all reruns. You know who doesn't pull on reruns? The giga whales everyone thinks carry the game because they've already whaled on the characters and weapons the first time around. Let me ask a question to everyone like me that wasn't around for the launch of Genshin. When you first started playing the game, did you also look up guides and just clicked on the ones with the most views? I mean, I think there is a lot to say, though, because, you know, let's say a whale wants to skip a banner, right? Or like a character comes out and they're found to be kind of underwhelming, but then they realize people were using them, quote unquote, wrong. And they realize they're insane. And then the rerun might sell the original launch due to a false narrative of them underperforming. Because that's the best case scenario. But I think that's a good idea. That's how you get schmucks like me to see videos saying, Vichy is a triple S tier must pull. Nobody will ever come close to being as good as him. He will always reign at the top of the meta. During 2.6. And then schmucks like me say, Oh, well, if he's that insane, he might actually be worth buying one of those double reward top-ups. That's the best case scenario for Hoyo. Someone not understanding the game and being convinced to pull by outdated video. Sure. The model preys on the assumption that players that don't know any better that whales carry the game. And don't think you're getting off clean either, Honkai Star Rail. I'm coming for you too. Despite the fact that Honkai Star Rail gets everything gets you. I, I don't really get why that narrative is important to what's being discussed right now, but I, I think that's probably a fair point, sure. Whales may not carry the game, right? But they do carry more per player. And I feel like it's really not a big deal regardless. So I'm not really sure why this is being argued. Gym players ask for, Honkai Star Rail has had some trying times. In particular, right after Zealous Banner. I have no idea how anyone can look at the Honkai Star Rail sales and get the takeaway. Yeah, they're doing so much better than Genshin. All of the incredible things Hoyo has done for that game hasn't really shown a return on that investment. But Hong Kong uh, That's because you have to wait towards this patch because everything was building towards 2.0 and them giving away a doctor ratio will thusly infect the amount of profits that they're going to get because then a new character will no longer need to be rolled on because the game is free to play viable enough where if they just get one copy of the character, then they're good, which is why the sales drop down. Uh, for 2.0, the sales should be pretty damn good as well as 2.1 when Acheron comes out. It, it does make a lot of sense. The other thing you have to understand is that Genshin Impact costs a lot more to develop. For Honkai Star Rail is a lot more simple, so they have to have less employees to develop because it's a much more simpler game. Think about how the character design with Honkai Star Rail, it's kind of just like make three animations, press three buttons, you're good to go. Whereas Genshin Impact, you have to do running animations, walking animations, idle animations, uh, attacks, jump attacks, plunging attacks. Like there's just a lot more, right? The game costs a lot more to develop and that was even shown in the initial development cost. So uh, the Honkai Star Rail is making more money pound for uh, for or pound for pound when it's compared to Genshin Impact. That's why the narrative of Honkai Star Rail is doing much better because for the amount of development costs which is how much return it gets, it's, it's a lot safer is the argument that people are saying. Honkai Star Rail players, that's not your fault. 
It's because the biggest lie Hoyo wants you to believe, that Genshin players are loyal fans. They just aren't. And Hoyo learned that lesson the hard way. When they dropped Honkai Star Rail, Genshin sales plummeted and Honkai Star Rails exceeded anything Genshin had ever done. Right, but that was also done by design. I mean, Hoyoverse isn't stupid, right? Like, they're releasing a game during a dead period. That way, players will naturally gravitate towards the other game because it's better for them to be invested in the company as a whole, not a game as a, game as a singularity, right? And that's 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 kind of not that complex to understand, right? Like, a lot of video game companies do that. They think that, like, oh, okay, World of Warcraft's in a bad state. Let's just release Hearthstone, right? They're doing that by design. They're doing that by design, right? And they, they kind of want to have that happen. Whenever Genshin is in a low state, that's when Hawkeye Star gets a new update, right? So that way, people bounce between the company and they perform, they get company loyalty rather than uh, game loyalty. But something unexpected happened. Instead of coming back to Genshin or switching to Honkai Star Rail, that player base that gave Honkai Star Rail the kickstart it needed left both games. Honkai Star Rail's tank and Genshin's didn't recover. Ain't just hard players. Uh, I don't know if that this was directly caused by that, but the games both have lost a lot of popularity, which I, I don't know how that supports the case either. The thing you've got to know is that the reason you and Honkai Impact third players are rewarded so well is because you're loyal. It's to keep you loyal. How you uh, no, I think it's because they have more competition and they haven't broken the Nomi barrier. Who knows Genshin players aren't loyal, so they don't do things like expand the end game. And that doesn't really make any sense. It would actually be the exact opposite. So I think this take is also pretty, uh, it, doesn't make, it doesn't make any sense. Right, like if, if, the, if the game players weren't loyal, then they would simply just not play the game. Like saying these people aren't loyal, so they're going to treat them worse. It doesn't really make any sense. And make events replayable that bring us to the crux of the issue and the reason why I am protesting. Hoyo doesn't bother to improve Genshin because they don't think we're worth it. No, they don't improve the game because they feel like they don't need to because people are going to play regardless. That's why. They are undervaluing us as consumers. They're undervaluing the content creators that give their product free promotion. They don't show us respect because they don't think we deserve it. That's a terrible way to run a business. If of they course. don't shape up, I'll be real. Zenla Zone Zero might be the death of Hoyoverse if things go the same way they did after the launch of Star Rail. No, well, I mean, you gotta understand, man, Genshin Impact can make 10% of what they're making right now and still be fine. Like, they would literally be fine. It's a good clickbait thing to say, but like, I mean, there's nothing's gonna happen, man. And I don't want that to happen. I love this game. It takes all the boxes in my head that make me excited to keep playing a game. But hey, a protest means nothing if there's no table to meet at. So here's what I want to see. I know my opinion doesn't represent everyone's. Just know you have every reason to want the changes you want. But I'm just going to talk about the changes I think are most important. One, publicly acknowledge the discontent. Apologize for I the agree. lack of transparency and the disrespectful way you have treated your consumers. Two, make a statement of a plan of action, including a change of leadership. Uh, sure. I personally will never have my faith restored with the company if I do not see that happen. Three, okay. remove AR content locks. And I know that people are going to hate me for saying this, Allow AR-30 and the Inazuma Archon Quest to be unlocked via purchase. Uh, I disagree. You depend on new and casual players for your revenue. That's a terrible and idea. the game is too damn big to expect them to play the game long enough to catch up. I think Every a terrible open idea. world live service game... Just literally just add a skip button. That's it. Just add a skip button. ...eventually has to come to term with this. Four, make events replayable. Your devs writers and artists like you gotta understand you an MM, mmos have this because the main gameplay for mmos is like the combat right but this is like it's a story game man like there's no reason to skip to inazuma because then there's there's just no content to skip to it's either you collect mint and berries in greenland yellow land or in purple land or underwater land right there's just there's no reason not to skip work too damn hard eventually playable is actually yeah that's a good one for their work to be unis honest away after two weeks and being able to replay some of the combat events 
is at least a band-aid for players concerned. Uh, the combat events shouldn't be combat events. They should just be implemented into the game in different little factors if you want to just around with your homies. In my humble opinion, like it's just rehashing the same game mode over and over and over and over again that hardly counts as content. About the end game. Yep. Before I go, a few other interesting things I discovered sure. while looking over the data. Surely you've heard this. Genshin got all of its success during the COVID boom. It did. I mean, not according to the data. Genshin didn't really start seeing consistent growth until post COVID. And that so, makes sense. No, the, the numbers, the numbers for COVID were insane, right? So I believe Hoyo lab can only project like what people bought in the game, right? I, I still think these numbers are sketchy at best. They're fun to look at, but taking them as objective fact is always a, a dangerous. It's about the height of Genshin's popularity was 1 million percent during COVID because the height of internet users was at a peak, right? 414% more users on YouTube and Twitch, right? That's obviously going to overturn to Genshin, which capitalized on Breath of the Wild success. This is a point that should not be argued. People didn't have money during COVID. Of course. I mean, I don't know about that one. I, I feel like they definitely still had money during COVID, right? I mean, I get what he's trying to say, but like, I, that's just not true. If anything, people were looking to spend money. Because once again, neither you can't prove this, right? You can't prove this. You can say it, but you just, you, you quite literally cannot prove this. It, it's a cool, it's a cool little story, but like, there's also the scenario where people were looking to have fun and they in order to have fun they could have just spent money on a gods game where they normally otherwise wouldn't when they could do anything else then you couldn't of course you're going to make more money when consumers are actually able to work on a related note to that I you keep mentioning breath of the wild like it invented that type of game genshin impact is a direct rip of breath of the wild i do not know how you don't see that if you don't the, the same glider system the same goblins the hill of churls or just the book goblin Right? It was literally called Breath of the Waifu. It is literally the same. It is a, It plays like a worse version of Breath of the Wild. Right? It's Breath of the Wild, but they changed the combat system. It's the same game, man. It's the same stamina system for swimming. The same stamina system for climbing. It, the, the environment looks the same. Like, come on, bro. Come on. It's, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. Right? I feel like a lot of, a lot of good things come from ripping off other games and attempting to do them better. But to deny that it is a rip is insane. I remember prior to 3.0, seeing a bunch of videos saying the game was dying. No idea where that came from. If you look at their quarterly- And Breath of the Wild is inspired by Skyrim. Okay. So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you Skyrim. So here's Skyrim. Okay. Here's Skyrim. Here's Breath of the Wild. Okay. As you can see, they look very different. Now, here's Breath of the Wild, and then here's Genshin Impact. So, as you can see, they look pretty similar. You know? They they look they look pretty damn similar. Uh let's continue. Growth during that time, the only dip was still higher than their revenue at launch. Nope. The dip at the end is pretty exaggerated because it's just the month of January. Of course. If we switch over to monthly, we can see the dip is still there, but it's not nearly as bad. Had I not included it, it would have shown growth, but that wasn't the case. Once again, it'd be incredible if you'd all join me in my digital sit-in. Log into the game, drop graphic settings to lowest to minimize your RAM usage, change- My ass, let me rewind. See, the dip is still there, but it's not nearly as bad. Had I not included it, it would have shown growth, but yep. that wasn't the case. Once again, it'd be incredible if you'd all join me in my digital sit-in. Log into the game, drop graphic settings to lowest to minimize your RAM usage, change your name and signature to something that shows your discontent, don't spend any money, and just leave the game up. Force them to notice us. Encourage anyone who asks about it to do the same. One star review them on the Play Store, App Store, and Epic. The I feel like once again you could change your name, but I don't think sitting in game is going to help your cause whatsoever, man. They can still send uh, player retention to uh, investors. Only thing stopping Hoyo from taking us seriously is the presumption that that is true. My. 
I feel like the guy made a lot of points. I think I disagree with a lot of them. I agree with a lot of them. Uh, I'm curious to hear what other people think about this video, but uh, I, I do think this guy is a little bit off the case for a lot of things, but uh, I'd love to hear what y'all's opinions are. Let me know what you think. It's a very interesting video. It makes a lot of assumptions, and I, I, I don't, and you know, this is coming from me, I don't really think it's fair to assume everything is objective as much as he did, but let me know what you guys think. Is this guy spitting or what? See you later.